For Domain 7, a new CISP exam topic is User and Entity Behavior Analytics. That's a bunch of words all put together, and if you break it down, it can explain itself. User and Entity Behavior Analytics. You are performing analysis and observing the analytics of users and entity behaviors. The best way I could think of to understand UEBA, because uh, I'm not going to say user entity behavior analytics the whole time. Should I call it UABA or UBA? Now, UBA just sounds uh, not cool. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I'll just keep going. Uh, the best way to understand user and entity behavior is to think of SIM. Do you know how SIM takes multiple logs from multiple devices and fires off alerts when something doesn't seem or look right? or an alert is triggered if a device goes out of the pre-configured established baseline? Well, UE, UE, <laughs> UEBA is the same thing, but for people, for users. Check it out. Let's say we have three people in Rymar Tech. Howard, the security engineer, Robin, the security analyst, and Gary, the accountant. My favorite trio. There's Fred too, but we're not gonna include him in this one, all right? You got Howard, Robin, and Gary. Here are Howard's daily duties. He works remotely at home and logs on at 9 a.m. to the corporate office network via the VPN. He then signs into the ticket software, assigns himself some technical troubleshooting issues, and logs into only the firewalls to check out network traffic and configure policies, update customers about their issues in the business portal, and answer any other correspondence. Howard then usually takes lunch from noon to 1 p.m., attends a team meeting from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., then goes back to work to do the same thing the rest of the day until 5 p.m., end of business day. Here are Robin's daily duties. She also works from home and logs on at 9 a.m. into the corporate office network via the VPN. She logs into the same ticketing software portal, assigns and updates herself with first some high priority alerts from the SIM software, <laughs> logs onto the SIM software to check out the logs, and tries to correlate the story of what is happening within a customer's network. She then updates the customers about their issues in the same business portal as Howard. She usually takes lunch from noon to 1 p.m., comes back to the office and works until 3 p.m. when there is a team meeting until 4 p.m. So she has a team meeting from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Then she proceeds to work until 5 p.m. end of business day. Gary's daily activities are as follows. He comes into work at 7 a.m. Gary has to physically be at the office in order to do his job. Because he's an accountant and he needs access to physical files, folders, bank statements, invoices, and rubber stamps, and all those su office supplies and things that can't be taken home with him due to privacy and confidentiality concerns. Gary uses his computer to issue, print, and receive invoices. Gary is also on the phone a lot, talking to other financial vendors and customers if he has to talk to them about their billing. Not every day is the same for Gary. Most days he just deals with customer billing as well as Rymar Tech's own financial handlings. But on Wednesdays and Thursdays, he has to work on preparing and getting out the paychecks for everyone in the company through a third-party payment processor software. Okay. Then on Friday, it is a slow day for Gary, which allows him the ability to wrap up his work and leave the office at 3 p.m. for the weekend. Gary leaves the office at 3 p.m. every day anyway because he comes in two hours earlier than, than Howard or Robin. Gary also has a long commute from New York to Connecticut, where he lives in a big house with his wife Mary, son Jackson and Lucas, and dog Riley. He also has a giant trampoline in his backyard. Okay, you got these three people with their respective duties. N now you know exactly what I'm going to do, don't you? You already know that with user entity behavior analytics, we can detect when one of these people are deviating from their normal behavior. Deviating from their normal pattern. Deviating from their normal count of things they do deviating from something they usually do or don't do at a certain time of day or week. Let's start with Howard.
after a few days and even some weeks of establishing a baseline, the user entity and behavior analytics software has managed to use machine intelligence to learn the behavior of what Howard does on a normal day. The UEBA software can do this because much like a SIM solution, UEBA solutions ingest data from a central repository that houses data coming in from multiple network devices, the servers that host applications like the business portal and ticketing system, and is set up to read VPN logs as well from the firewall. But unlike a SIM solution, individual agents are not deployed throughout the network. All this is used to learn user behavior patterns. Okay, the analytics engine has a good idea of Howard's activities. But one day, an alert triggers. Uh, hey, real quick, let me go back to where I said uh, um, individual agents are not deployed throughout the network for UEBA. Um, that's just what I read on for one instance. I'm not sure if that is for all cases. So I'm just letting you know that it may be the case or it may not. Maybe there's agents and maybe there's not. Whatever answer I get later, I will post it in a pop-up icon in this video right now. And if I don't do that pop-up icon, well, that's just embarrassing. Okay, so one day an alert triggers. Howard, or at least Howard's account, has tried to download a customer's business profile and contact information from the business portal. Now, now remember, the business portal is the primary contact point between Howard and the customers who are having security issues. As in, if a customer has traffic that is being dropped and Howard manages to resolve the issue, to resolve the issue, he will use the business portal to provide an update, which will then automatically send a message to the customer saying their issue has been resolved. This way it eliminates emailing customers, which can be both insecure and just messy and hard to keep a track of. We get hundreds of emails a day, right? A business portal provides a good and secure place to connect to it via HTTPS and authenticate with two-factor authentication before being let in. Well, to whoever manages the UEBA software, they see an alert come in for Howard. And it says that Howard has been trying to download copies of a customer that contains their primary contact names, phone numbers, email addresses, the type of customer they are, what type of firewall they use, and a ticket history of all their requests to add or remove IP addresses from the firewall rule base. The UEBA administrator says that doesn't really look like what Howard has done before or should be doing, although he is allowed to, but he doesn't usually do that. That's not his usual behavior. The administrator wants to inquire a little bit more about this alert. The administrator will contact Howard's manager and let him know that the user entity and behavior analytics platform has seen Howard download multiple copies of customer data to his local machine. The manager will then ask Howard, uh, hey man, what's up with all these downloads? And here's where it gets interesting. Three things could be happening here. Howard intentionally downloaded the information for a legitimate reason. Howard intentionally downloaded the information for malicious reasons. Or Howard wasn't even aware that his account was used to download the customer profile reports. In our case, Howard tells his manager, hey, yeah, that, that was me. The customer in question wanted a history of all their tickets sent to them in PDF form, and they didn't know how to do it, in, in, do it from the portal. And I was in the middle of a troubleshooting call and was busy and just quickly did it. I know I don't usually do that and should have gone through an approval process, but it was just so busy yesterday, man. Sorry about that. The manager says, thank you for letting me know, but yeah, just do the approval process next time. But in actuality, Howard, the customer should be able to do all that by themselves. Just show them next time or send them the documentation that has a procedure to download their own information. We shouldn't be doing that for them. It's a waste of our time and manpower for security and for reducing our workload. And you know what else, Howard? You know if we do it for them once, they're gonna want they're gonna want us to do it for them all the time. So in Howard's case, this was not a mistake nor a malicious act. It was just an anomaly detected by the UEBA software. Just something out of his usual scope of duties. It's not really a false positive, but you know, kinda is. You know, it is a false positive. It's not a malicious act. It was done by a legitimate user. 
flagged as a malicious act, but it really wasn't one. Howard's manager tells the analytics administrator the incident is fine to overlook, but to continue to keep the rule that fired off the alert in place just in case it happens again. And also allow the analytics platform to assign Howard a quick little risk score to continue rating and measuring his behavior. Something to say that he is high risk, not that he's high risk, but that something happened with him in which he should be given a quick risk score to account for what happened and to compare to see if it happens again. Just for, you know, logging purposes, for a, his, for a historical context purposes. Okay, let's take a look at an incident with Robin. 